I've been playing some Baldur's Gate and I liked how you can physically roll a die during skill checks. So I thought let's recreate this in Godot but unlike Baldur's Gate, let's use Godot's physics to make the dice roll, something akin to Clubhouse Games or Monopoly Plus. I'll even show you how to handle this annoying wall riding situation later on. Ok, let's go though. I created this 6 sided die model in Blender following this tutorial. I exported it as a .glb file and imported that into Godot. In Godot let's create a new scene, call it die and choose a root node of rigid body 3D. And I'm just gonna drag and drop the die.glb mesh straight into the die scene. And reset its transform so it's right in the center of the scene. Then let's add a collision shape 3D and choose a box shape. Then click on the box shape and we can set the size X, Y and Z. Since my mesh is 2x2x2, two by two by two, that's what I'm gonna write for the size. Then let's click on the rigid body 3D root node and we have to set a couple things in the inspector. Set the gravity scale to 2 and check on freeze. Now let's add a script to our die. First of all, let's just make it roll from the center in a random direction. Declare a variable called start pos and a variable called roll strength which we will initialize to 30. Also make a signal called roll finished with a parameter value which we will emit once the die finishes rolling. In the ready function, let's set the start positions value to global position. In the input function, let's make the die roll once a button has been pressed. In my case, I'm just gonna use the default UI accept button, so I'm gonna write if event dot is action pressed, UI accept, and let's call the non-existent roll function. Now let's implement that roll function. First of all, we're gonna reset state. So that means sleeping is gonna be set to false and freeze is going to be set to false as well. And this means now the dice can actually be influenced by gravity and fall. We're gonna set transform.origin to our start post variable, which means the die will be back in the starting position. We're gonna set linear velocity to vector 3.0 and angular velocity to vector 3.0 as well. We're going to randomly rotate the die along all three axes. So for that we're gonna write transform.basis equals basis and then specify which axis we're going to rotate around, which is going to be vector3.right and then specify the amount of rotation in radians, which is going to be a random f range between 0 and 2 times pi. So this is between 0 and 360 degrees. And multiply all that with transform.basis to apply the rotation. Then similarly we're just gonna write transform.basis again equals basis vector 3 dot up this time because we're going to rotate it around the y axis this time. Rand f range from 0 to 2 times pi and multiply all that with transform.basis. Finally the third time transform.basis equals basis vector 3 dot forward because we're rotating along the z axis this time. Rand f range 0 to 2 times pi times transform.basis. Now our die is completely randomly rotated along all three axes. And you have no idea how long it took for me to figure out how to do that in code. Moving on. It's time to actually throw the die. So let's make a var throw vector equals vector3 with the x being rand f range from minus 1 to 1, y being 0 and z being rand f range from minus 1 to 1 as well. And then call dot normalized on it. Now this vector will randomly point in a direction in a 360 degree circle without pointing up or down. Let's set angular velocity to throw vector times roll strength over 2. And finally call apply central impulse with throw vector times roll strength to actually roll the dice. Ok, so the die rolls, that's all fine and well, but now we have to get the result of the roll. For this we'll use a special raycast, so let's create a new scene, call it die raycast and choose a root node to be raycast 3D. In the inspector change the target position's y from a default minus 1 to a minus 0.1. Also check hit from inside. And let's add a script to the raycast. First we're gonna write at export var opposite side of type int. 
This is the value which we will set to each ray cast in the inspector and it's gonna be whatever value is on the opposite side of the die. In the ready function we also have to call add exception and pass in owner. This prevents the ray casts from detecting the die itself because we only want them to detect the floor and the walls. Back in the die scene let's add a new node 3D and call it ray casts. Then we will instantiate the die ray cast as a child of it. Call it die ray cast 1 and position it on the side of the die with one pip. The little blue arrow that indicates the ray cast should stick out from one side of the die. Then we can see the opposite side of it is the side with 6 pips. So we'll go into the inspector and set its opposite side value to 6. This means that when die ray cast 1 detects the floor, the actual value we got from the roll is 6 because 6 is pointed up. And now we can duplicate die ray cast 1 and call it die ray cast 2. Position it right in the middle of the die face with two pips. Change the target position from Y minus 0.1 to X minus 0.1 so the blue arrow sticks out. And change the opposite side from 6 to 5 because 5 is on the opposite side of the two face. And just repeat that process for every side of the die. And we know we did it right if we see little blue arrows pointing away from each side. Now we want to read the opposite side value of the ray cast that is touching the floor at the moment when the die stops rolling. To do that we'll select the die rigid body 3D and go into the node tab and we'll find sleeping state changed signal, double click it and press connect. Now let's go to the top of the script to get our raycasts, so we'll write on ready var raycasts equals dollar sign raycasts to get the node 3d dot get children. Now we can go into the on sleeping state changed function that was automatically generated for us and that gets triggered whenever the die goes to sleep or wakes up. And we're gonna check if the die is sleeping, in which case we'll loop through all our raycasts by writing for raycast in raycasts. And we're gonna check if raycast dot is colliding. So this will check if the raycast is touching the wall or the floor. If it is, we're gonna call roll finished dot emit to emit the signal. And we're gonna pass in raycast dot opposite side to send the result with the signal. Let's put the die into a scene. This is the scene in which I'm gonna put it into. And as you can see, I have a static body table and four static body walls, which will contain the die and make it bounce from them. Notice I set the physics material to each of the walls and set their bounds to 1 to make the die bounce off of them. Now let's instantiate the die and put it between the walls of the scene. And just as an example, I'm going to connect the die's roll finished signal to my world script. As you can see I don't have much in here, but I have this result label in which I'm just gonna write in the value of the dice roll. This is just as an example, so you can see how to use the result of the die roll in whichever script you want it in. And now when we roll the die, we get the correct value and it's printed in the middle of the screen. When we press the roll button again, the die rolls again. But there are a couple of issues. First of all, the die rolls again even if it didn't stop before, so you can just keep rolling if you keep pressing the button. Another issue is if the die lands awkwardly on the wall. In this case, none of the sides touch the floor, so we never get the signal that the die is finished rolling and we never get the result value. To prevent the player from re-rolling the die before it's finished rolling, we can create another variable called isRolling and set it to false. Then in the input function also check if not is rolling. At the end of the roll function add isRolling equals true. And just after we emit the roll finished signal, add is rolling equals false. To fix the die riding the wall issue, we're gonna add a var landed on side equals false right here. And if any raycast is colliding, we're gonna change landed on side to true. Then at the bottom, we're gonna check if not landed on side, in which case we're gonna roll again. And now that issue is fixed as well. And that's it, we have a fully functional die. As you can imagine, you can use the same raycast method to make any sided die, like a d12 or a d20. You can make the die go faster if you hold the button down for longer, or make it chaotic by rolling many dice at once. 
check out the playlist on screen for more short form Godot tutorials and thank you for watching.